Welcome to another of my videos. I hope you find it useful. Today I am drawing a dog's nose with coloured pencil. So uh, here we have a, a video on drawing a dog's nose. This is a fox red Labrador. Um, he has quite a pinky browny nose. Um, and I'm going to talk you through how I've created it and what colours I've used. Um, so I start off with uh, finding the lightest colour that I can see um, and that goes with eyes, that goes with fur, that goes with anything that I'm drawing. I'll start off with a layer of the lightest colour that I can see which happens to be sort of like a, a, a light um, dusky pink. This is the Polychromos um, Cinnamon. So I'm adding a really really light um, pressured layer. Um, it's not an even layer so you can see that there are sort of like little circles there are I might have used a slightly harder pressure in in areas um, you know just starting to right from the start build up the texture of the nose um, I have no set process really as to drawing noses or eyes or fur it, it just sort of um, evolves as I'm working on the piece but I do with the noses especially I do like to have some sort of um, form to work with so just adding um, some of the shapes like the nostrils and around the nose and everything just helps me work out which colours I'm going to use or how dark I need to go um, with the rest of the nose for the mid-tones and everything. Um, adding the, the line down the, down the middle of the nose, uh, that helps me to work out shadows, uh, highlights, uh, the form of the nose. So obviously it's not flat straight across there, so I need to be adding you know, dips and, and everything. Um, and then we come into more of the mid-tone colour, and this is the Polychromos um, Caput Mortem, which is a, a fabulous, fabulous colour, um, especially for brown noses, to combine with like the, the dark indigos and, and the pinks and everything. Um, and again, you can see that I'm adding this in um, with very light pressure. Um, I've slowed the video down here and I, I do apologize about my shaking drawing board um, you can see I'm adding it in small circles so we haven't got a smooth smooth beautifully blended even um, layer of this color we're looking at the texture of the dog's nose and the, you know I'm not going to put tiny tiny details in but just looking at the texture of the dog's nose and there are those sort of like roundy bits and it's quite sort of bumpy and knobbly in places so just using this technique of um do we call it scumbling I'm, I'm not sure you know just sort of um putting that color in um, in places you might put it in really lightly, in other places you might go with a harder pressure, um, you know, just to indicate where on the, on the dog's nose, you know, the lights and the darks are. Very importantly, all of the time I am looking at my reference photo. So I'm always checking where the light direction is coming from, where I need to have my highlights, where my, my shadows are the darkest. Um, and most importantly, especially for pet portraits, and there you can see, I'm just checking that my, um, my nostrils are aligned properly with the eyes. Um, the angle of the nostrils will always be the same angle as the as the eyes. Um, you know, it's really, really important to get the shape of the nose right and the nostrils right um, and it can look a bit strange to begin with until you've got all of your um, all of your tonal values in it can look a bit odd and you can think well they're a bit small or you know um, so it's important to keep looking at your reference photo keep measuring keep making sure that you because it's so easy just to get carried away and you know um, and I've added uh, you know I've ended up with like a, a massive eye before because I've just got completely carried away and then I've got on oh gold um, you know so so do keep checking your reference photo um, the dark indigo the polychromos dark indigo is fabulous again combined with the cap at mortem for creating sort of like a browny colour. So even though this is a brown nose, I haven't used any brown at all. Um, it's been reds, it's been pinks, it's been blues, and then we have got some black as well. Um, you know, but I've, I've used no browns at all in this. Um, the 
to get a really really ditch rich black and i think i've mentioned this before especially on warm colored portraits using a, um, a dark red under your black is going to give you a really really lovely rich black um, you can see i'm using quite a strong pressure um, when i'm adding that caput morton violet into the nostril area um, you know i'm always saying oh you know light pressure but actually these are black these are dark dark areas so you know yes you can add hundreds of layers of light pressure if you want or you can go in with like quite a dark uh, quite a um you know a heavy pressure and again with the black um you know but you might start with a really uh, hard pressure at the um at the edge of the nose and then just gradually um lighten up as you come to sort of like here where i'm going there just lighten up a little bit so you've got that lovely gradual um uh, you know uh, graduated tint from sort of like the red to the black um, burnt carmine again a fabulous color um, for pink noses um, really just adds to the um, the richness of the nose I suppose and it, and it honestly really doesn't come out looking like a bright pink nose um, you know um, it, it just adds to it especially with the dark indigo um, you know and the more dusky reds So here I am starting to add in um, a little bit more detail. I'm starting to strengthen those layers, uh, you know, adding in the colour that I've added in previously, um, but building in the um, the lights and the darks. And again, I, I mentioned about sculpting um, the nose, you know, really starting to... Um, make it look like it is sticking out of the page rather than it being flat uh, the uh, the light fast i think this is a white that i'm using the light fast white is a fantastic pencil i'll say that again <laughs> the light fast white is a fantastic pencil um it's brilliant in its own right as, as a white pencil but it's also just amazing for for blending um and also white um white over dark so you can get a you know quite a bright white over the um over the other areas but use softly um in a sort of like a scumbling you know in the in the round circle technique you can really start to blend your colors together but not so that you get sort of like a pale color and it just really helps to kind of soften and and smooth and blend and and i will use um I do use a mixture so here I've got the polychromos white here um, and I'll use a, um, a mixture of the different brands of pencils just as I see fit just just where I feel that their their texture and the way that they lay down um, will work with with what I'm using um, you know sometimes I won't use a polychromos white at all um, I'll use a luminance or I'll use a, um, a Pablo or or with the new light fast I'll use that instead um, black I don't use a huge amount of black in my um in my pieces um i do use them for the finer details so now i'm starting to add in finer details um but i tend to use them with varying pressure so i can add in um a very light uh, layer of black which actually looks more gray um but the pigment goes down I suppose a little bit faster than maybe using one of the cold greys perhaps I, I don't know um, but you know if there is a really black area then I, I'm going to use black but I tend to use it over the top of um, other colours um, I don't know whether I mentioned before I can't remember whether I mentioned before but using black for um, for shadows over yellowy colours like a like an orange you are going to run into trouble and you are going to get green tinges because the black is a, a much cooler and blue based uh, pencil so and that's where your dark reds and also your amazing dark purples come into play um you know to use instead of the black or to put in as a layer over the top of those yellows and those oranges and then you can put your black in over the top of that because then you know you're not going to get the the, the greeny tinge
I always like to incorporate a few <laughs> really bright colours into my pieces. So I'll use a really bright orange in my dog's eyes. I'll use, you know, um, a bright pink in, a, in, in black fur. It can look amazing. So just tiny touches, um, you know, just a, a very, very light wash of the bright pink that I used before. Um, it just it just helps with the realism which which sounds a bit bizarre because you know you don't really think of dogs with bright pink noses but it just helps to just lift a little bit and 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 again shows where the light's reflecting um the, the pencil i'm using at the moment is a light gray uh Caran uh pablo pencil um and I would say that that is one of my stable pieces of kit. I always have um, that particular pencil um, out on my on my drawing board. Um, it's very pale. It's a it's a cold grey, um, but it's brilliant. If you've got something that's not quite right, quite white, that is the the pencil to use. It you know it, it is fabulous. Um, this is um. A slice tool it's a ceramic knife um, and actually I've, I've, I've videoed using it but it didn't work particularly well um, you can just um, scrape off some of the pigment to get some some lovely white highlights um, and it's amazing for creating whiskers especially on white paper so I'm using the uh, the Clairefontaine pastel matte board on this particular piece um, and, um, and and it is the white one so using the slice tool um, to, to cut out whiskers is is amazing you'll see when you come to the end of this video the the final piece has got the whiskers cut out and you can um, you know you can see And this is the uh, <laughs> the famous Scotch Magic Tape. Just a a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant piece of kit for uh, use on white paper. It's it's fantastic. <laughs> it's brilliant. Um, you can use it on a later stage um, where you have lots of layers. You can use it um, straight from the from the roll, and it will and it will really pick up a lot of the pigment. Or, and I think I've I think what I've done here is I've actually stuck it on the back of my hand and taken some of the stickiness away so it's not going to pick up masses of the pigment um, but you can just and this is a stylus just a stylus tool that I bought from Amazon um, you can use a pencil on the top of it you know anything that's got sort of like a, a, a a, a sharpish point um, but you just put the the tape on to um, the area where you want to lift off a little bit um, and you draw over the top of it and it will lift off you can see where the, the pigment's starting to lift off on the tape um again this this is i've taken quite a lot of the stickiness off it um you know just to um just so it doesn't lift off too much of the the pigment of the pencil and then sort of final touches um i think this is a light flesh polychromos um just in the areas where I've lifted off that pigment just to kind of blend in um, you know and and smooth off um, and, um, and 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 that's kind of your nose um, finished um, I will add a list of the pencils that I've used in the description um, and I'll put at the end a picture of the finished piece uh, and um, and I hope you enjoyed my video